What's up everybody and welcome back to another David Maxa Golf video where today we are going to be going back into the hack motion sensor. I was hoping to get out and do a driver video except it is pouring outside. Well done Queensland, we got the rain again. But you know what, this thing has actually helped me a lot already and I wanted to go through and explain to you guys exactly how I use it, how it could benefit your game because personally my iron play, if I throw my Arcos stats up, has actually increased quite a lot where I'm actually starting to gain shots on the field. So with the hack motion, there are three different options that you can purchase. My recommendation is you can start with the base option because you're gonna have the exact same sensor and then if you wanna increase that or if you wanna go up as time goes on, then you can simply just upgrade and you can still use your exact same sensor. I think that's a very unique offering to the market. You don't have to buy an additional sensor. You can use the same one that you've got. And this new hack motion V3 sensor, which is the brand new one, is exceptional in picking up data and its accuracy is pretty much spot on. Let me show you how I set it up and let's get into it. So you open your Hack Motion app, which is a really cool app. And what I like to do to get started before I go into any detailed kind of practice is I just like to start practicing. I just like to hit some balls. I just like to see what my shot streak is like, which we'll get into. But start practicing. Um, free practice is what I like to do. And then we're gonna go continue. It's going to ask me to connect my sensor. So I've actually got to turn it on. Good one, Dave. Connecting to your sensor, connected. Um, now, what you can do here is you can go through your tagged shots and you can compare yourself against the ones that you've already tagged. I can compare myself to the PGA Tour, which I'm going to be doing next. Or I can have a custom, uh, I'm not gonna call it a workout, but a custom practice session where I can actually benchmark where I want my own address to be, where I want my own top to be, and where I want my own impact to be. So if you're working with a coach, you can take this home and then you can go through all of those custom ranges that your coach has actually worked out with you to practice at home, which is, I think, absolutely amazing. We're just gonna to go to none because I'm just gonna go uh, the standard practice that Hack Motion offers. Continue, uh, playing side, I'm right-handed. It's going to be on my left wrist. And then we're going to get into the calibration. Now, um, I like to actually put it in front of my eyes so I can see that it's flat. A lot of people hold it down here and you don't know if you're actually like that. So I like to see that that is definitely flat. That is in position. And then I'm going to rotate my forearm up 45 degrees, keep it in the same position that's in position, and then we are ready to go. So, let's hit a shot. I'll grab a 9-iron, I like warming up with a 9-iron, and let's see what the first few shots are like. So absolutely, I have not hit one shot today, so this is gonna be interesting, uh, but as we can see, I like to actually sit this up in front of me as well. You can see, and this is not gonna be a full shot because it's my first one, so we're just gonna work our way into it, get the feel of the swing, have a few swings and then put the biometric feedback on as well. Left that face open. So, yep, we can see that on the sky track. Face is definitely open, but it's the very first swing. And what's Hack Motion said about this one? So, we can see that I'm very, uh, my extension is massive at impact. That's not good. So, we need to work all of this out. So, these numbers, not fantastic. Um, you can see there, in terms of those lines, you want them pretty tight. There are gonna be some, some variations to them, especially in rotation, but you want them pretty tight. Let's, uh, let's see if we can improve on that. I felt better. And we can see it's straighter. And now those, those two, the orange and green line you can see is a little bit tighter than the previous one, which is good. My flexion and extension at the end is much better. At the top and address, I'm very flexed. So I probably need to work on that. And my ratio 3.6, not too bad. That was hit pretty good. Okay, so a few warm-up swings there with a 9-iron, and 131 carry with the warm-up, I'll take that. You can see how on this graph here, it's getting much tighter in terms of those three shots, because I'm looking at the graph, I'm seeing what I need to do in my head. It's, it's kind of hard to explain this, but you just want to restrict, not restrict, you want to minimize movement that's unnecessary. You want to minimize unnecessary wrist movement like this, or a wailing club. You want to keep everything, you know, pretty much just in a tight little bubble, like you're trying to swing in a phone booth. Um, and you can see my address position, my impact position at plus four is much better. 
and my ratio there, what, 5.3, not sure about that. So uh, let's go back and just take a look at the other one. So that's shot three, that's shot two, you can see quite a difference, and shot one. So I've progressively gotten a lot better, which is good. Um, but let's benchmark ourselves against the PGA Tour Pro. And we're going to choose a swing. We're going to go longer than 100 yards. And what are we going to do? I have a 9 iron. Is anyone... Okay, so we've got David Thomas, 7 iron. So David Thomas is a major winner. Um, LPGA Tour... Uh, you know what? Let's go David Thomas because I like the LPGA Tour because their, their swing speeds and things like that are probably a little bit more realistic to the average, uh, you know... Scratch to plus uh, scratch to five handicap male maybe but either way let's uh, we're going to go David Thomas with a seven iron so we'll select that and the idea about this for Hack Motion is to really start becoming your own coach not that you got not that you need to do without a coach but that if you have a coach and you go and see him the reality is that you're probably not getting enough coaching especially if you're an aspiring pro not because they're not doing a good job but simply because it costs a whole lot of money to go and see a coach and if you're seeing a coach every single day. Well, you're going to be broken. You want to hope that you make the PGA. But either way, let's uh, let's have a couple of swings at David Thomas and see if we can get anywhere near close. I've got a seven iron. Probably, I felt like I, I flipped at the bottom a little bit and left that face open. So let's see. These are not. Um, I mean, I am still warming up, so these are not full full swings. And what we can see is a solid. The solid lines are my lines, which is not too far off, to be honest with you. I mean, we'll work on that. But you can see the unnecessary movement I'm talking about where that dotted blue line is, is nice and, and flowy, if I can say that. It's, it's smooth and consistent, whereas my blue line, which is my honor radiation, is definitely a little bit more jumpy and, and, and jittery. Um, and the same with my flexion extension. So I'm... Plus 22, two extended on impact, so he has a very low impact. And I'm minus four on impact with my ulnar deviation, so I need to bring that uh, up more, which is basically what that's saying to me is it's coming into uh, rotation. So the, ro the ratio here at 5.8, I'm not too sure about that. Yeah, not sure if that's getting that 100%, but either way, let's hit a couple more. That's right, but hit it good. We see actually a drastic difference in this one. So this one was not a good swing. Um, I'm too extended uh, a little bit, but that's better. And actually some of my other stats in my wrist movement are good, but um, yeah. Need to uh, need to get better than that. Let's do one more, and then we'll do the biometric feedback. I have the rights today. Oh my gosh, I'm leaving everything open. All right, hasn't been like that lately, and that's starting to look a little better. Uh, again, too extended because I'm flipping at the bottom. I'm going to ignore this ratio. I'm not sure what's going on with the timing here. Um, that's normally pretty good. It's actually normally spot on. So. We'll ignore that for today. But let's put the uh, biometric feedback on. Um, I want it immediately, and I want it throughout the shot. So select feedback range, flexion extension. I think uh, well, we need to see exactly what his is, don't we? So the lead wrist uh, extension at address is plus two, uh, sorry, plus 12, and increases at the top at plus 22. So we can use that. So plus 12, plus 22. So we now have the biofeedback on, which is... So this is where he's, he's about there somewhere. Whoa. So he's really flexed. And it's actually amazing when you go through this biofeedback and you feel this, how many of these guys, and I've done a few of them, have more of a single plane swing. I know that there's a lot of swings that, you know, you're telling you to go way out and then come back in. Actually, when you go through this with the stats, a lot of the guys tend to stick on that same plane 
and just eliminate those unnecessary movements. So what we're looking for here is there and then back down, okay. That, I didn't, I hit that chunky and I blocked it. Let's take a look. Not too bad though, you look at this graph and again I've, I've gotten a little better, a little tighter and I'm just, I'm still flipping at the bottom so let's, uh, let's keep that bowed the whole way and then just rotate and then I should actually start hitting some straight. Again that was nice. Yeah, look at that. Ball speed's up and Carry distance is up as well, happy with that, and I'm dead down the line. And now what you can see is my graph, if I go through these shots, my graph is starting to look a lot closer to David Thomas's, so that, no, that's where I was starting to try and work it out, and you can see the differences, shot six, I mean that purple line is way off the mark, and then if we go to the most recent one, well, the one before it was actually pretty good too, but then the most recent one is looking a lot better than, say, that one or that one where we started. Okay, let's do one more. All right, so there's my best ball speed for the morning. I hit a couple of shots there and carry 165. And I've probably got the tightest line. My impact is at zero, which is good. His impact is obviously a lot, a lot less, but you know, not everyone's like that. I'm definitely happy with zero. The rest of the numbers are looking really good for me. Um, and I mean, as a five handicapper, this is getting me really close to where a PGA Tour's wrist position is just by jumping in my garage here, hitting a few shots, using the hack motion and getting myself in better positions. You saw when I started, I was hitting everything right. I'm now starting to hit the middle and I'm now starting to hit it straighter and further with really a similar effort and I'm not even middling them. So, you know, it's only really up from there. Let's hit one more and then I'll give you my thoughts. That's better. I love that. Look at that, optimized numbers the whole way, 157 meters of carry, working on it smoothly. Again, I can push that, but I'm trying to work on the swing. I've got that beautiful fade. And if I want to hit a draw, let me, uh, well, let me just check that first. So I take, yeah. I mean, look at that, that is really, really good. And, and you're never going to get it exact. I'm sure they're a, a very close to one another in terms of swing to swing to swing. But when I'm looking at something and I'm trying to produce a result like that, I've hit optimized numbers, I've hit good distances, and my wrist position is pretty close to matching a PGA Tour Pro, and I can continue to work on that using hack motion here at home. But let's see what happens and what changes in my wrist position if I try and hit a draw. That was hit nice. Yeah. That's a nice draw, 125 ball speed, love hitting that exact same spot. 168 meters of carry, I've absolutely flushed that. And let me take a look, wow, that's close. That's, I'm obviously too extended again because I'm flipping at the bottom, but that is close to his numbers. Um, and look at that, 125 ball speed, 168 meters of carry. Hack motion, take a bow. I mean, um, I'm gonna end this session, end practice. You can go Brack, you can, I'm going to name this as well. Uh, I'm going to name it David Thomas 7-iron because then I can go back and review um, exactly what I did within that practice. I can view the shot list and it's going to show me the progression of everything. It's going to give me all the detailed data and numbers which you could then go and take back to your coach. He could help you understand it so then of course you could go and understand it yourself as well. Um, but guys, that is the hack motion versus a PGA Tour Pro as a benchmark, teaching yourself exactly where your wrist positions need to be. From the start of this video to the end, you already see an improvement. That's just gonna be natural because everybody you know, gets better as they go when they're hitting balls on the range as well. But here, 
I mean, it's, it's invaluable practice. It really is. I'm able to benchmark myself against the PGA Tour major winner, see exactly where my swing is and improve it. Obviously, they know what they're doing. I should try and replicate that as well. Check out Hack Motion. Discount link's in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.